now. Uh, hello, my name is Alan, and today uh, we're continuing the series of uh, Fate of the Quadrant. This is my fate hack uh, inspired by Star Trek Adventures. Uh, this session has been organized as part of the Open Hearth Communities uh, Gaming Calendar. If you don't know about Open Hearth, please search Open Hearth Gaming and you'll find us. Any more information, go back and check out session one. Um, we're playing with safety tools and uh, we're just going to get launched straight into the game. Uh, and this will open, uh, and usually this is the first time we open, not with a view of the USS Montgomery at warp, but of the uh, one of the one of the ship's Type Nine shuttles. Um, and as it, it's not at warp yet. Uh, it's just uh, moving away from. Uh, well, we'll find out in the opening log entry. So, um, should I go to seven three three T? Do you want to read the the opening log entry? Chief of Operations Log, Stardate 48284.0. Lieutenant 733T reporting. We're returning from the repair of a communications buoy on the edge of the Rular Nebula in Shuttle X. And we will rendezvous with the Montgomery Outpost Gamma 7. The repairs were straightforward, so we've had time to collect some samples from the nearby gas cloud which will keep the team in non-planetary astrometrics happy for weeks. I'm still concerned uh, with the performance of the engines on the Montgomery, and personal note, must drill the engineering crew more on my return. You're muted. Um, and then we cut to inside the cabin, where... Um... Lieutenant Vassal, uh, what um, what do we what do you, we see you doing in terms of prepping to head to outpost Gamma Seven? Uh, you know, typical uh, Star Trek uh, fiddling with uh, control panels and uh, you know di displays that are all geometric shapes that don't seem to bear any relevance to um, to anything. Uh, maybe like little dots and lines coming up together. Uh, yeah. Um, we should uh, make easy time to reach the Montgomery 733T, the, assuming there are no spatial anomalies en route. It, won't be, it should be as straightforward as the repairs were. Agree, Vassal. Um, I look forward to returning to the Montgomery soon. And that's when the shuttle's communicator sputters into life with a, a scratchy signal, a male voice frantically declaring... This is a priority one alert. Repeat, a priority one alert from outpost Psi Alpha 3. Oh, God, please help us. It's killing us all. It's just got Johnson and... Wait, wait, what's that? Who's there? No, no, no! And then there's the wet sound of meat being cleaved and something spatters against the microphone. Then silence. What do you do? I punch up uh, outpost Psi Alpha 3 on that same... Um you know, display, basically, trying to bring it up and uh, work out, you know, how far away, et cetera, all of those kind of things. Uh, so when you plug in Outpost Alpha 3, nothing comes up? Most strange, uh, Lieutenant. There's Outpost Alpha 3. That was clearly a Federation uh, broadcast, but the computers don't seem to have any location of such on record. No list of the crew, no nothing. Uh, is there Perhaps. any historical records of said outpost? Just I will tell you that, that the use of the Priority One Alert is out of date. Nobody uses Priority One Alert now. Back in the day, it was the way it was kind of, you know, Mayday, Mayday. It was. But sorry, so I interrupted. Historical records. Is there any such outpost listed? Uh, Let's find out. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I frown and do do, and you see the ship's navigation display like fade away, and then maybe like you know, uh, ship's Wikipedia archives uh, appears on the uh, the thing. Uh, so... Um, and yeah, I think that that uh, when you search that way, uh, you get an entry for Psi Alpha Three. It's an old uh, Type Two station. Um. And you've got a location for it. It's a it's it's no more than a, an hour away, 
at maximum warp. And priority one at the time was a very important priority, was it? Was it? It was the top priority. Like? Yeah, it was. It was help. Hmm. Vassal, given the inappropriate use of an old um, Mayday priority uh, and it not being listed, I believe something may have happened. I suggest we get there at maximum warp. I'm glad you say so, uh, 733T. Uh, even if this is uh, a hoax or some sort of error, um, I admit I find it most interesting. I would be curious to see what the true story, the full story is here. Uh, the archives are, I assume, unclear on the on the the eventual outcome of uh, Outpost Psi Alpha Three. And um, there's oh, it tells you it has a crew capacity of thirty five. It's a it's a standard Type Two station um, of its of its time. Um, they're still in service, widely in, in service, uh, though they tend to be upgraded across time. Um, this one's then, down as retired or like decommissioned or no then the odd thing is that a cross-reference pops up to the current listing where you started looking and it now appears in the current listing too hmm. i have to have keen look at the date at the database here it's uh seems to be throwing up some sort of glitch Anyway, uh, seven three CT. I will uh, punch in coordinates. Uh, perhaps you should relay to the Montgomery via the the communications boy that our mission is complete and we'll be re remain. Well, we've got about five win a five hour window before uh, we'll be late for our meeting. Perhaps we can get this wrapped up in time. Let's try. A great haste. Yep. You know how the captain hates loves punctuality. Indeed, let's aim not to be late. Unless you've got any other ideas, uh, and you may have, uh, do you want to cut to dropping out of warp at the location that uh, it's it's just the location you're getting in terms of the broadcast is just within the boundaries of the nebula? Uh, just before we drop out of warp, uh, let us try and scan the area for any anomalies. Uh, let's do that thing. Um, so this is probably going to be you, I'm guessing. Uh, well, 733. Can it not be both of us? Uh, well, it could be. That's true. It could be. We have um, an hour to spare. Um, so uh, let me think. Conduct a sensor sweep, this sounds like. Yeah. So yep. this is uh, this is you sensors to overcome two uh, or three. Uh, two plus two per situation aspect. Um, I think, what's your Psymed? One. One. Okay, so you're rolling with Psymed and the sensors on the Type 9 shuttle rate two. So um, so you're rolling just with uh, plus two, I'm afraid. There are two against a, diff against a difficulty of four and with Vassal to help, that gets you to... to Even three? Stevens. Yeah. Two. Yes, two and two. I see what you mean. Red is positive. Even Stevens. Okay. Um, on a success. Um, uh, there is the station. Um, lights are, you know, lights are on. People are home. Um, there is significant interference, comms interference from the nebula. There's no question about that. Um, but yeah, it just sits there uh, in space. Does our scan show anything odd? Um, yeah, okay, I'll give you this. Um, life signs kind of uh, flicker a bit when you're trying to get some indication of life signs. Um, and, and it flickers between 33 and 34. Uh, sorry, 34 and 35. Um, uh, and, and then settles on 34. Total true complement? Uh, typically would be 35. It has 35 births. Hmm. The message we got an hour ago, Vassal, clearly sounded like somebody was expiring. Odd that the number has not continued to dwindle in the last hour. 
Well, I think it says it, it's killing us all. It just got Johnson. And wait, who's that? There. Hmm. Yes. So that sounds like two down. But an hour has passed since then. Yeah. That is odd. Unless they've overcome it. Even if they'd overcome it, one, it would seem that more than two crew, one or two crew members would have. Uh, I, I fear we will only find out when we reach. Uh, I try and uh, hail them on the comms. And there's a pause, and then uh, let me see if I can find them. And then uh, you get uh, NPCs. There they are. Down on row 58. Uh, this is Station Chief Hubbard. Sorry. This is Hubbard. Thank your pardon. Um, um can we help you? We're Shut responding up. to we're responding to a distress signal that was sent uh, one hour ago. Uh, from Alpha Sci Alpha 3. Um uh, this is Sci Alpha 3. Um I I I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about. Do you have a crew member named Johnson among your number? Uh, uh yeah, yeah. We received, we finished repairing a communications boy in the edge of the nebula. Uh, we were about to depart when we received a distress signal from claiming to be from Outpost Sci Alpha 3, uh, mentioning that some sort of life form had got on board the station and was uh, killing the crew and had killed uh, crew member Johnson and that the sender was in some distress. Uh, well, uh, I'm not in distress. Clearly. Um, roll insight, would you, Vassal, versus mm, two? Sure. That's flat on the dice. Um, he doesn't seem to be entirely with it. You're not quite certain why, but he seems a little bit kind of delayed, a bit slow. Okay. Um, would that be uh, an ask there? Yeah. Yeah. So you can take a fate point or the minor narrative cost, I guess, just to get my uh, head back into fate. I, I think the minor narrative cost is, um, unless you want to boost it with, by uh, is, is, um, he's going to stay a bit confused. Okay. I will, uh, Silence the comms for a second. Now we'll look at 73T and say, uh, I am out of the two of us, uh, I would say neither of us are immensely uh, qualified to judge human emotions at a long distance on small details. But the, oh, he's not human, is he? He's a, uh, what is he? Oh, yeah, he's, um, uh, oh, God. You played one of them. Tell her right. Tell her right. Uh, Chief Hubbard appears to be a Hubbard appears to be a Tellerite. Uh, this is a most confusing. Uh, I have never met a Tellerite appear relaxed and confused at the same time. It's perhaps odd. it is. Uh, I think we have a duty to investigate the station. We do. Uh, I am slightly concerned of. Um... Getting over there and being exposed to something. Do we have a teleport on? Uh, no, I don't think you do. They could teleport you aboard. Can I suggest I go forwards by teleport and you bring the shuttle in? Uh, that way I can um, contact you to say whether it is safe to dock. We need the shuttle I think, there. I think that we should uh, arrive on scene before we get we leap to any conclusions. Seven three three T. So far, all we have is a confusing uh, comm signal and a communications from uh, well possible death reported. 
um, a confused station manager um, from a station that didn't initially exist. I agree. I admit it's rather odd. Uh, so therefore, I, I would... suggest they beam me over and I will give you the all clear once I have assessed the situation. I mean, I'm prepared to offer a compel here. Um, yeah. Sappers clear the way. Yeah. Um, to to force the point. Yeah. Cool. I mean, I, I, I'll level with you. For me, it's just the uh, the, the the meta resistance to um, over planning your entry into the dungeon is always my uh, sticking point. You know, like we haven't arrived and seen the threat yet. I don't want to go in like a commando squad, but I think a compel on uh, Sappers lead the way would make it clear of seven three DT. You know, like stressing that to Vassal kind of thing. Okay. Hubbard, um, beam over Hubbard. one immediately. Uh, yes, sir. Um, uh, yeah, okay. Um, just hang on. Um, and, and, and he turns away and you see him do some manip manipulation and off you go, 733T. Vassal, what are you doing in the interval? I mean, it won't be a long interval, you hope, but I'm just curious whether you um, plan to do anything. I, uh, I, so Paul already used a long range sensors to scan the area, right? Um, and uh, I will uh, proceed to do a visual inspection of the station, I think. Like, okay, uh, okay. Around. I, I think this is probably engineering. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, making a slow and slightly curvaceous approach to, um, to the shuttle bay or, yeah. um, and uh, yeah, so let's have you roll again. I think I'll I'll just make it two. I don't think this is difficult. Um, so it's uh, engineering versus two to get a sense of its, you know, integrity, everything else. Yeah. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Unless is there anything from the um, the shuttles, the ship? Oh, sorry. Right. I, I, when you said visual, I took you took you at your word. Oh yeah. Uh, well, yeah, no, it, I know you're right. It is visual. That's. Um... I, I'm just going off the fact that obviously all visual stuff in Star, Star Trek is uh, via a camera, right, rather than a screen. Uh, but yeah, no, no worries. Engineering. But what was the difficulty again? I uh, just two. Just two. Well, I am currently on minus three, so I will um, uh, minus one. This would be another ask, wouldn't it? A minus it one would. would be no data. Well, the GM says how things get complicated, or they may for a success at a major narrative cost. Now, are you all interested in having that on your hard move shelf, Alan? Because I'm happily to have that. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm happy to have that sit on my hard move shelf. And I, I would like to take the fail, basically, because, uh, you know, we need the inciting incidents, right? <laughs> fine, fine. Um, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, so you know, you, you take her in, you glide in uh, to the shuttle bay. Uh, by which time 733T is probably already reporting in from, uh, you know, the the uh, transporter pad in Station Ops. So um, I, I think our plan was for him to teleport across and me to stay outside until he'd done the... Until so, he'd given us... I see, okay, okay. So I think that, like, it's whatever the thing is, it will be while I'm flying around looking at stuff that works, you know? So 733T, is, is this, uh, you know, arrive at the transporter pad... There's Hubbard and uh, a, a, a crewman, and what you know, just run a tricorder, you know, run the tricorder over the atmosphere or something. I think run a quick tricorder scan over. Yeah, um, I, it's fine. I won't even make you roll. It's that fine. Uh, Chief Hubbard, prepare for the arrival of our shuttle in your shuttle bay. Uh, oh yes, uh, certainly, sir. Um, um, yes, of course. Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, shuttle bay. Um, prepared to see visitors. Um, and summon uh, Johnson straight to the shuttle bay. I wish to meet him there. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Uh, Johnson, Johnson, uh, Johnson, head to the shuttle bay. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't care if you're off duty. Go to the shuttle bay now. Um. And and, you? Uh, and uh, can I take you down? Uh, Levy will take you down to the shuttle bay, sir. The shuttle bay, please. Uh, so yes, sir, says Levy. And uh, Levy is a, a, a young human crew member. 
uh, and he takes you to turbo lift and you, off, you're, off you go to the shuttle bay. And I think you probably step out of the turbo lift at the shuttle bay end just as Vassal is stepping out of the shuttle. Is Levy as confused as Hubbard? Um, I, I think he's, uh, I would describe, well, yeah, well, let's see what your insight's like. What, what can you, you know, can you, can you identify a, an aspect on Levy? Um, I think his difficulty is going to be two again. No. No. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, those, those Borg nanites do mess with your, your sense of empathy, don't they? Um, so, um, and there standing at a, at a slightly uncomfortable attention is another crewman as Vassal gets off the shuttle um, uh, and and sees uh, Lieutenant Vassal get off the shuttle and says, um, Johnson reporting, sir. Johnson, me and my colleague, Lieutenant Vassal, received a priority one distress signal from yourself less than one hour ago. Just to be clear, it the the whoever sent the signal described it as already having got Johnson, and then the unnamed broadcaster seemed to get it. Very well, Johnson. Can you identify this person? And I will replay back. Um, and he looks at Levy and says, "Does that sound a bit like you?" And Levy says, "Yeah, maybe a bit." The tricorder computer pattern match Levy's voice against re recorded. Okay, um, I think this is a fairly standard task, but let's just test it just in case. So engineering versus two. Success. Fine. Um, pattern match. First sample suggests um, high emotion. Uh, but Levy says, well, how did you get that, then? You transmitted it approximately one hour ago from this location. I, I wasn't on duty an hour ago. Um, if I saw, you know, in the background, I think, bringing the shuttle in while this debriefing is uh, coming in, you know, having got the thing in the comms to come and, uh, you know, enter, everything's fine. Uh you know, brings it down and steps out of the shuttle and uh, stares, you know, comes up behind Levy, as he says, uh, I was on off duty until an hour ago. Uh, oh. Yeah. Uh, greetings, crewman. Uh, you you don't remember making this call, and we re yet we received it. Uh, the most strange thing of all was that it used a outdated uh, priority one message rather than the current uh, distress signal protocol of Starfleet. He, he just, I, I, I don't, I, I don't, I, I don't know, sir. I, I... Hmm. Well, many, many Vulcans uh, claim not to feel any emotion, but having gone from boredom to curiosity, I'm rather pleased to have met you, Ensign Levy. Uh, thank you, sir. Perhaps you could uh, look at seven three three T. Perhaps you could enlighten us to what the mission is of uh, Outpost Sci Alpha Three. Um, uh, I, maybe, maybe you should talk to the chief about that, sir. Of course, Ensign Levy. Of course, uh, our life sign sensors picked up thirty-four members of crew on board. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Is the standard complement not thirty-five? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I understand it was 35 um, until the accident, sir. Would you elaborate, Ensign? Uh, oh, I, I, apparently one of the science staff was killed in an accident. I, 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 and he looks at Johnson and says, w d w d was it fire? Um, it's before when? my time. Oh, before my time, sir. And you've received no replacement from Starfleet? No. I mean, to be honest, we don't do much. We just, you know, scan Nebula. I'll go to the nearest computer panel mm -hmm. 
Uh, computer, playback logs concerning death of crew member. Death of crew member, Dr. Erin Petrea. The human brain can survive for four minutes without oxygen unless a sharp object is applied directly to the heart repeatedly. Yeah. Entry complete. When did death happen compared to Stardate now? One year. Odvasal. Um, and Indeed, Levy and Johnson can can hear this in the background, and you hear Johnson say, Levy says, it was longer than a year ago. Interesting. You believe it was longer than a year ago? Uh, oh, sorry, sir. Yeah, yeah. I, I, sorry, I didn't mean to, to kind of uh, listen. Um, Computer, when did Levy join crew? Levy, A, crewman, engineering, uh, mission status, active, began service here, uh, one year, six months, Earth time. Levy, you claim to not have been aboard. Well, I wasn't, sir. You know, uh, you know, I, I, I don't think many of us were. That was back in the day. So, you know, so people say. One year ago, according to the, the logs, Levy. Perhaps it's best we speak with the chief. Yes, sir. Absolutely, sir. I'll take you back up to Ops. Yes. And uh, on the way, uh, I ask, uh, who is your chief medical officer here? Uh, that That's Dr. Sanar. Sanar. Interesting. Uh, well, while we are here, perhaps it would be useful for uh, Lieutenant 733T here is one of Starfleet's finest engineers. Perhaps he could, she could take a look at the uh, at your ship's logs and identify whatever it is that seems to be causing the discrepancy between your memory and the database. I, yes. Uh, again, I maybe you should check that with the chief. Of course, of course. Back into the table lift up to the chief. Yeah. Um, something with T, you didn't pay a lot of attention. Um, but it, you 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 notice that when he sets the turbo, when Levy sets the turbo lift in motion, it looks like he selects deck seven. Um, whereas you thought that ops was on deck eight. Um, but when the door opens, you're in ops. I'll turn to Vassal and say a non-standard configuration of the station. What do you mean, 733T? Ops should be on deck eight of this station, this style of station. It clearly has been remodeled at some stage. Did you not know, been directly over to Ops, 733T? I did. What yeah, deck was, was I on when I beamed in? Well, as you check the wall above the turbo lift, it says deck eight. But previously it was on a different deck, I believe, is what you were implying. Um, what I think I'm implying is that when 733 got in the turbo lift, she noticed the eight went down to the shuttle bay. On the way up, the levy said deck seven ops. Yeah. It opened at deck seven. You stepped into ops. When you turn on a look, it says deck eight. Okay. What are you feeling at the moment, 733T? I don't feel. <laughs> uh, I'm feeling that there is clearly some um, temporal, possibly, anomaly happening. Okay. What about you, Rasal? Confused, I think, uh, you know, as a, a Vulcan who uh, doesn't express a huge amount of emotion, but certainly started, feels it, uh, is uh, looks sent through to you and says, uh, I, I have a bad feeling about this. 
something is deeply wrong here. Ensign Levy, you said deck seven when you took the instances of turbo lift, and yet this is deck eight. Um, did I, sir? I'm sorry, sir. I thought I, I just said ops. Um, I, 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 I sorry, I, 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 I wasn't listening to myself carefully enough, sir. I'll do better next time. Don't concern yourself, Ensign, but the turbo lift would have still taken us to seven based upon what you said to it. Um, I, I suppose so. Most intriguing and disturbing. Uh, At which point I think probably Chief Hobard uh, kind of bustles across uh, and 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 says, um, uh, sir, because um, he's a, a, you know, a, a chief, um, uh, I, I, I don't quite know how we can help you with your comms problem. Um, and I would like to, now that I'm face to face with the chief, uh, I would like to um, adopt the human uh, practice of uh, reaching forward with a strong handshake and a direct gaze in their eye uh, and try and read, uh, you know, gain some sort of insight into him, uh, his demeanor now that we're here in person. Okay, um, then yeah, let's let's have you see if you can discover an aspect related to him. Then, yeah. uh, I think, uh, and I think it's insight. This because it's kind of in the name. Mm -hmm. So create or discover. Uh, uh, his again difficulty is two. Uh, you know, he's he's not a complicated character. I think. Okay. Then that is a plus one. Plus one, you succeed. Get a free invoke on. Um, you think that he is um you think the chief chief has a habit he appears to be um subject to some pharmaceutical could be alcohol seems unlikely for a teller right mm. I, uh, the Sal will, um, no, he won't do uh, as soon as the chief turns his back for a second go. <laughs> uh, no, uh, raise one eyebrow, uh, and, uh, say, yes, uh, chief, it's very confusing. I hope you understand that we can't return to our ship, uh, until we have eliminated any possibility here and identified the strange signal we received, uh, well, I, I, I guess, I mean, yeah, I guess, but um, we're, we're, we're fine. Clearly. I mean, have... Levy can show you any way you like. Yes, what work is it that you undertake here on the station? And we scan the nebula. For? Uh, for anything that shows up. And... Uh... Has anything shown up? Uh, no. Well, I suppose not every post can be the Enterprise. Uh, perhaps uh, if I could speak to your medical officer, that might help. Uh, yes, uh, Levy, take take the officers down to uh, the, the, the doctor's sick bay. Uh, um, and... I just wonder, Alan. Is, I mean, Paul, is there anywhere, any angle you'd like to pursue? Uh, I was going to create a um, a mechanical time piece, and then measure that against what the station records as time. Okay. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe like yeah. You know, maybe like a bit broader than that. Maybe like a, you know, like um, an independent source of truth using your tricorder in the station. You know what I mean? Like source analyzing, of like truth. yeah. Well, I mean, that's what we refer to it in uh, Active Directory, right? Like in in actual computing, right? Is um, because you have the they, they are called sources of truth. Okay. Basically, well, clock, basically, clock I is think something thing, yeah. that, that is independent to measure yeah, yeah. one thing against another. Yeah, but but just because the discrepancies yeah. are more than just time, you know what I mean? Like they're they're all over the place, so it'd be good to not narrow ourselves down to just. Um, it, it says. Luckily, 20... I bought this from Paris. It is a one kilogram block and a <laughs> one meter stick. 
Um, uh, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to go down to the engineering deck, the workshops down there, and uh, and fabricate um, a pendulum-driven timepiece if that's what you're looking to do. Uh, yeah, or a um, a, sand, a candle, the um, uh, sand thing. Can't remember. What okay, yeah, hourglass. Hourglass. That's the point. Right. Uh, yeah, you can probably get one of those out of a out of a replicator. Uh, replicator, um, hourglass, sand, one hour. <laughs> um, and yeah, no, I mean you can you can do that at the drop of a hat. That's you know, there's there's I don't see why it shouldn't have the the pattern for a, an hourglass. Um, and then what you know, then what? What are yeah, you testing? You the two. Um... Measure one hour of time. Alarm set. Um, and see if it expires at the same time as the um sand. Sand. Okay. Um and that so I mean you could both therefore go to the doctor unless you want to go off and do something else, seven three three two. We the other thing I was this. thinking, Will was, if uh, is there a hollow deck? Um, uh, no. Okay, that rules that one out. I was going to reconstruct the death of the previous doctor based on logs. That's such a good idea. Let's have a hollow deck. Okay. I mean, it's a remote science station with thirty-five people, right? Yeah, like they yeah, need yeah. To have some level it's to have some recreation. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so seven three three T to the hollow deck, and Vassal to sick bay. Yeah, uh, Levy will show you to sick bay. Johnson will show seven three three T to the hollow deck. Yeah. Okay. Um, Vassal, as uh, you know, you, you take the turbo lift down. It's on deck three, I think, um, and uh, you out you get, and and you're walking along the corridor. There's crew, you know, occasional crew passing you. Um, they mostly seem to be uh, ops engineering, uh, the odd science officer, um, and uh, you know, as you pass, a door opens in the corridor. Nobody comes out. Then the door closes. Um, but next along is sick bay. Um, 733T, the trip down to um to sick bay is uneventful, you know. Again, um, I think it's on, on deck one, can't remember. Um, and uh and Dr. Sanar is there. Sanar is a, is a, a female um a female uh medic. Um uh, and looks up and says, um, who are you? We are members of USS Montgomery. Uh, I didn't know we were getting visitors. Uh, we've been diverted from a signal sent from this station. Oh, right. OK. Um, what can I do for you? What can you tell us about the previous doctor? Previous doctor, I mean, that's going back a bit. Um, How far uh, did you meet them? I, mean, I, 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 I've been here five years, nearly six. Um, no, I didn't. They'd left before I arrived. Odd ship systems say one year, one is it one or one point five? One point five. One point five years ago, the previous doctor. Expired on this station. Expired? I don't think he died, did he? Uh, ship systems, the logs say he did. Um, I can't even remember his name. Um, and, and I think at this point, Johnson intervenes to say, uh, sorry, sir, I think you've, you've, you've got that wrong way around. Uh, uh, Dr. Betrayer was, was one of the science staff. He he, she wasn't a medic. Oh, sorry, I've got that the wrong way around, haven't I? 
I'm, I'm slightly. Yeah, let, I'm sorry. I've messed that up. Here. Yeah, I'm sorry. I've got that entirely the wrong way around. Vassal was going to sick bay. You were going to the whole deck. Vassal, I, Will, I'm sorry. Let we let me pick up with you in that scene, not seven three three T. Everything changing. <laughs> really, I, just, I just, even the main characters are. <laughs> but but uh, but why were you going to see the doctor, Will? Because it was um, related. I, is it because we've got it now massively wrong? It's not no, the right no. doctor, is it? So it's Doctor Sunel. The person who died was Doctor Betrayer. Uh, and um, I was uh, going to ask them about um, the accident as the medical staff and also about um, the chief, you know, because the chief, I believe, is under some form of intoxication. Fine. Uh, let's 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 pick up that thread. Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm really sorry. Uh, it's been a long day. Um, I, I asked the same question that put the 732T did, you know, uh, there's just a continuity error in an episode about continuity errors. <laughs> Um, yeah. uh, and and yeah, so Sanar tells you that. Um, Levy steps in and reminds you that Betrayer was a member of the science staff, and then you ask what? What were the circumstances of their death? Uh, hang on, I'll look it up. Um, and while they're looking it up on the computer and everything, I uh. You know, I, I uh, lean in like next to them and uh, say, "Interesting, uh, chief, the chief of engineering you have here, uh, Chief Hubbard." Uh, oh yeah. I never quite. I never met a Tellerite quite like him. Um, I don't know many Tellerites. Um, just hang on, hang on. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, apparently atmospheric. Uh, some kind of of accident in an airlock. An airlock, you say? Yeah. Which airlock? Um, looks like personnel air airlock three. And Doctor Betrayer was the previous medical officer. No, no. Uh, says here, a uh, member of the engineering staff. Ah, interesting. Uh. It's strange. Uh, you said that this was five years ago, yes? Uh, no, I said I've been here about six years. And that Dr. Betrayer was before your time? Uh, yeah, this uh, looks here, what, nearly 15 years. 15 years, interesting. When we were with Anson Levy before, it seemed to only be one year, according to the computer. Um, and Levy is with you. Do you want Levy to hear that? Yeah, uh, I look and turn on Levy and say, uh, Ensign, how long ago did you say the Dr. Betrayer? Uh, sorry, I, I just somebody told me it was a year and a half. Uh, I, I didn't really know. 15 years. While year you have that look on your face, I think we yeah. cut to the holodeck. Uh, what was the objective in the holodeck? Remind me. Uh, I want to um, look at the death of um Balthazar, is it? Betrayer, betrayer, betrayer Erin, betrayer. Dr. Erin Betrayer. Yeah. Um, so holodeck playback, uh, footage from time of death of Ensign Betrayer. Um Dr. Betrayer. Um, Dr. Betrayer. Uh, and and prior to that, is there a nearby replicator? Uh, yes, um, if you want that to be. Yep. Um, computer, generate on plexiglass uh, all crew information on when they joined and in what position they joined. Uh, and so it begins to replicate little rectangles yeah. of plexiglass. Basically, I, I want... A Details physical engraved. bar dump of that information nearly set in stone. <laughs> set in plexi, plexi dock. Fine. You set that going and you go into the, the hollow deck. Um, the slightly confusing thing is that what you get is uh, a lab. Um, 
with uh, a female uh, Vulcan science officer um, working in the lab. And then, um, then there's a then she seems to morph into a burned body in the corner, and then she seems to morph into um, somebody with a knife in her chest, and then the entire image changes to an airlock uh, with her suffocating. Is this caused by bad recording or is there is there corruption? Let's have you find out. Engineering. Engineering, I think you want to dig deep in this, don't you? So I think difficulty yeah. is at least four. I am on four, but let's get that a bit above four. Um Uh, well, I could either use tech will overcome any problem, or if there's a bug there, it can run from me, but it ain't going to hide. <laughs> I will find whatever. I like that. Okay. And I will use a point of stress. This will stress me out. I'm I'm annoyed at this. Um, okay. Because it it is not behave. This is not the way it should be. No. So I'm now at plus three, which I think gives me some good shiz it does it does um so with plus three you get an answer and answers to follow-up questions reflecting effect so uh as for succeed but you get a boost related to the answer so you get you get the one answer two follow-ups and a boost related to them yeah so the key thing you're trying to work out is why am I seeing what appears to be several different versions of the same event superimposed on one another? Um, and the fact is that the computer seems to be, it seems to have multiple views of the same event. Yeah, so the hollow image that's put together through multiple cameras to generate a 3D is it that each view is slightly wrong? No, it's it's that the the event playing out in the computer changes. Okay. Uh... So it's it it's playing one and then microseconds later, it's changing it. Relayed on top of it is a change. And a change and a change. And and if you sit there long enough, you've got two two follow-up questions to come. So I better let you, let you ask your, your follow-up questions first. I will hold them until I contact Vassal. Okay. Um Vassal, um the computer did indeed say 1.5 years. Yet the computer is just telling the doctor 15. Perhaps there is some sort of uh, corruption in your ship in your station's database. That does not appear to be a consistent answer. But I've just asked it. Um, hang on, answer. I'll ask it again. Computer, how many years ago did Dr. Betrayer die? Dr. Betrayer died 15 years ago. However, the answer it gave us on the on the shuttle deck was one year and a half ago. And he is awake, says the computer. Dr. Betrayer is awake. Dr. Betrayer is dead, says the computer. Who is awake, computer? And and scrolling up the screen is a list of all on-duty crewmen. Dr. Sunai, did you hear the computer's phrase statement just then? Um, you asked it. When Betrayer died, it gave the same answer I've given you. It seems to be consistent. You did not hear a reference to he is awake. No. Uh, Ensign Levy, could you give me the room, please? Uh, sir, yes, sir. And Evie Levy 
leaves the room. Doctor, I am concerned that there may be some sort of contaminant here on the station. Uh, perhaps that all of you are habituated to and unable to perceive. There um, is many anomalies that my colleague and I are, are experiencing on your as we progress through the station, through the outpost. Uh, but first, I must ask you, Chief Hubbard, can you show me his med? I understand this is a. I'm invoking, uh, you know, I. Come I need to know. Right. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's a HIPAA uh, violation, right? <laughs> like uh, it's against GDPR. Uh, Chief's health. I'm concerned. He appears to be, in my opinion, intoxicated on duty. Um, I wouldn't describe as intoxicated. I do prescribe him some relaxants. Relaxants for what? Sir? Yeah, um, he 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 suffers from stress. Um, he's been here a long time. Um, uh, I I made a judgment that that given the relatively low um, the low risk environment we're operating in, that it was a reasonable thing medically to do. May I see the, uh, how long has he been medicated for? Um, as long as I've been here, plus or minus. The sense I got was that my predecessor also provided him with, with some support. With relaxants, uh, some years. Uh, Chief Hubbard has been on board the station since the outset? Um, I don't know about from the outset, but but I, I don't know. I've never never asked the question, but um, he, I think he's been here longer than anybody else. Computer, when did Chief Hubbard begin service on the station? Uh, Chief Hubbard began service on this station, uh, date 2311. Which is 60 years, years ago. ago. 60, 60 years ago. 60? Yeah. Dr. Sunar, what star date do you believe this is? Update, says the computer. Blink and you're dead. Update. Uh, and I take a step back from Dr. Sunar uh, and say, did you hear that, Doctor? 60 years, that doesn't seem likely, does it? No, it does not. You didn't hear the other phrase from the computer. And and the Vulcan's eyebrow goes up and says, other phrase? Something when very... you say that you believe that we may be subject to um, the effect of some contaminant, have you considered, Lieutenant, that it may be you who's subject to um, some condition? Well, that is the possibility. It would seem an illogical one. Um, well, if I can be of any assistance of a medical nature, I am available to provide it. Like you have been providing Chief Hubbard, I'm sure. And the eyebrow goes up as if to say, is that a criticism? Yeah, well, uh, Vassal has learned uh, insinuation, uh, I think, from humanity. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think I'm, that's where I'm we'll take our first yeah. break. I think that that's a good, that kind of, are you sure you're feeling all right, Dr. Lieutenant Vassal, is probably a good break point. Um, so it's six past the hour, shall we say, Back in our seats at quarter past? Yeah. See you then. So where does, where our commercial break comes and goes, where do we find Vassal after that, um, that closing scene? Um, I think that Vassal uh, is going to, uh, is in a turbo lift um, and, uh, you know, comes his badge. Uh, and um, informs uh, 733T that they're hearing, uh, you know, the station's computer appears to be uh, issuing warnings that only, that none of the crew of the station can hear. Uh, 
perhaps this is where we should focus our investigation. Indeed. Meet me in my makeshift time measuring lab. I do have questions for the chief, uh, and I am ill-suited at uh, technical examination. Uh, it's not an area to discuss. Agreed, then. I will meet you there, 733T. Uh, and I calm it off, and I say, and they say that Vulcans have no emotions. Um, and so you convene at the uh, at the at the whole deck, I think, uh, which is what seven three three T is using as his um, as her uh, base of operation. Temporal lab, temporal lab, um, and um, because time moves at the at the necessary time for a narrative, um, I think that. The computer, just as Vassal enters the holodeck, the computer says, uh, alarm set, alarm time, bip. Quickly bip, look at bip, the... B. What? What's the... Um... There's still some sand to run. So the sense you get, uh, 733T, is that time, the computer time, is running faster than your... Um, your mechanical timekeeper. Very well. Uh, I will point this out to the cell. It, it would support. It would seem to support at the moment your temporal anomaly uh, suggestion. Vassal, uh, you know what? 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 When I asked you what you were thinking at, a little while ago, you said confusion. I'm just curious now whether your thinking is firming up at all. What's the conversation between the pair of you when 733T points out this time differential? There appears to be some sort of anomaly here with the, the station and those on board. Uh, according to the computer's log, 60 years. The Chief Hubbard has been on board here 60 years. Computer, how long has Chief Hubbard been on this station? Um. Chief Hubbard, Operation Chief Station, Psi Alpha, Psi Beta 3, uh, Psi Alpha 3, sorry. Um, uh, time in service, uh, 25 years. Time on station, 15 years. I'll turn to the cell and say, something different there, but I will pull out my blocks of plexiglass my individual i will mm. move to chief hubbard because mm. i asked it to length of service you did on the station what does that say um it says 10 years there is something very seriously wrong with the computer on board vassal how that is affecting the crew or why they are believing it, that I do not know. Vassal? Here there may be more than this. Even our own database has changed in relation to once we made contact with the station. And the use of an outdated signal. Physical things, though. Own should not change well the time, clearly. the time and sand and also these plexiglasses when they were printed that is what the computer believed clearly the computer is moving with whatever time it thinks it is and whatever errors it believes it believes them to be true it's got no anchor point. It's got nothing that can base its data on. If it keeps becoming corrupted, it believes that to be true. Computer, what do you base your time measurements on? Uh, UFP, Galactic Standard. 
my engineering knowledge, how is time measured? I, th I, I mean, I don't think in canon we know. But I, my assumption is that some kind of subspace time signal keeps all ships uh, and planets, uh, you know, aware of what central time is. But I want to go back to Vassal. Would you still describe yourself as feeling confusion or... Do you have, have you refined that at all? I think all that we've really discovered is that we can't rely upon anything that the station says to us because it doesn't keep a consistency between different statements. Um, but the crew do not uh, seem to be aware of the discrepancies in their own computer. Uh, and do not know that they'd be able to hear any of these uh, statements that so far only Vassal has has heard from the computer, which are quite menacing, uh, that Hubbard is the only one who, uh, Hubbard, sorry, is the only one that, um, based upon, you know, the only consensus that we get from everybody, all sources of unreliable information, is that uh, Hubbard was here um, during the period when uh, the accident happened and the doctor died. Um, those seem to be the only facts that we have on the ground, basically here. Uh, otherwise, everything is uh, is unreliable. Um, and uh, yeah, I, um, I I believe that the only approach is to either, you know, do the full engineering uh, diagnostic of the uh, ship's computer and try and you know, do some and get into a Jeffrey's tube and like uh, analyze it, um, you know, in the most sort of in-depth audit kind of thing. Um, and to um, to push Kubad uh, in, a, you know, on any of this in a more private setting without his juniors around and um, other people. Okay. So, so confusion is resolved slightly to the 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 station chief is somehow central to this the station chief is uh the only one who would appear to have um yeah because if we they're all all of the staff seem to be in, internally consistent with their own records even mm -hmm. if those records then contradict the computer and when the when reality seems to move to match what we expect it to be when we come to the resolution you know but there's always this sort of quantum state of uncertainty right okay uh, you know so so station chief knows stuff yeah exactly yeah station Fair chief enough. knows yeah okay so um a deep engineering audit and or chief hubad what do you believe lieutenant Uh, I'm going to go with an engineering audit. I have very little skills to no, yeah, interrogate. Uh, no, I, I suppose that was the meta question of uh, is that what you want to do versus um, you know, something else. Do, yeah, do you see and do you see another uh, another option on the table in terms of furthering the investigation? Is there an astrophysics lab? Uh, there has to be one, given its supposed function. Yeah, the station. And this is where this doctor worked. In um, I don't think anybody's been quite that precise, but if that okay. was what you'd like, yeah, I'm very happy for that to be the case. Um, yeah, I'd like to go to astrophysics. Do you want to interview Hubbard? Yes, I believe that would be appropriate. Excellent. Um, and as uh, so, Vassal, you're heading off back up to Ops. Um, and you're heading to astrometrics, fine. Um, uh, I think Vassal, as you're heading up to Ops, um, a, a crewman passes you in the corridor and says, excuse me, sir, um, have you seen uh, Levy? You no, haven't seen I... Levy since you 
Since... No, I left him in the turbo lift when we departed and met medic, uh, the, the chief medics. Uh, oh, thank you. Um, oh, sir, not him, her. Thank you, sir. And off he goes. Curiouser and curiouser. Um, meanwhile, astrometrics. Um, the door opens in astrometrics. Uh, you know, you. Do, how do you find astrometrics? I'm just. You know, do you get a crewman to show you, or do you work your own way way there? Uh, I'd have thought there'd have been sort of paneling that will dictate where. Fine, fine, yeah, like like what's behind me. Um, so yeah, so you follow the instructions. Astromet astrometrics is on this deck uh, in this module, um, and you open the door and uh this is very odd um you and vasal are in there and and you and vasal look up see you and their mouths open unnaturally wide and they emit an inhuman yell and then the door closes 733T, I think that's a stress. What do you do? Raw phases, open the door. Um, astrometric, astrometrics lab. This time I'll let you roll for stress. So uh, I think the difficulty here is four. Um, and I think this is an assault on your grip, on your command. So four, you're defending with command. No. How many? That's minus two on the dice. Uh, so minus one, minus five. Oh, oh. Do you want to do anything about that? Because you're about to take five stress. Can't really do... Um... You can always spend a fate point to make things better. But I haven't got any any aspect to invoke. Battle hardened. Um. Um. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Spend a fate point. Take three stress. Uh, you can always reduce the stress you mark by two as your regenerative nanites are unleashed. As well. Um. No, I'll go one in the. Um, yeah, let, let's do that. So, what is that spend of a fake point? Yeah, um, uh, and I put shaken in as your mild consequence. Well, uh, that would now not be a consequence because I've spent the nanites. Oh, okay, fine, 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 fine. Right, there you go. Um, and that gives me, as I remember, a free hostile invoke on your Borg nature. Okay, another one on the shelf. Um, Basal, Ops, Station Chief Habard. Chief, perhaps I could have a word with you in uh, your private office. Uh, yes, sir, certainly, sir. Um, and he takes you to an office off, off the Ops deck. Um, yeah, I imagine are, quite are you small, any... like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is a cubby hole kind of, you know, with a desk and a terminal and, you know, one one visitor's chair. Um, and uh, and he says, are, are you any clearer about this broadcast that, that you picked up? Some things are becoming into detail. Yes, Chief. Uh, I mean, is there anything we could be doing? Is there anything we should be doing? When did you begin your service on the station, Chief? Um, oh, God, I've been here, wow, nearly 11 years. 11 years? Yeah. Do you remember Dr. Petraea? Um, yes, yeah, sad case. Um, yeah, really sad case. Um, you know, apparently she was really talented. Um, but I remember she was always really... Um, you know, kind of very secretive, very private about stuff. Um, didn't like people going to a lab. Um, and and then, you know, then there was the accident. 
Dr. Petraeus' lab, I assume that it must have been repurposed over the 11 years. Um, well, I, yes and no. Because of the, the, the radiation emission, we've kind of kept it sealed off. Radiation emission, you say? Yeah, that's what killed her. Interesting. And you have sealed away, not an airlock uh, accident. No. What star date do you believe it is? Um, and I think he'll give you the star date we got at the start of the session, which is, uh, uh, and he says just uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. today's star uh, date, yeah. 48, 28, 4.0. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, computer, when did Dr. Betraya, when was the accident involving Dr. Betraya? It comes, it hungers. Dr. Betraya died 10 years ago. Interesting. One year after you began service here, Dr. Betraya died. That was about, that would be about right, yeah. Mm. I have received multiple responses to this question from the computer in my last three attempts. The only consistent thing remains that you entered service one year before Dr. Hubbard, Dr. Betraya died. Well, I guess that's because it's true. However, the original claim that you has been in service for 60 years. You are looking rather good for a Tellerite of your age. Absolutely. I can't have been here for 60 years. How long have you been uh, medicated? chief i think i think i think we need a roll on that one i think this yeah. is insight or command is this um going in heavy or going in soft uh i mean i have the same in both um i think it is going in soft to be honest you know uh because i think i will say that i, I will uh, I'm not go in straight with that question i will go uh you know uh there is Starfleet is a demanding field of work. Uh, remote outposts like this face their own challenges as much as any battleship or survey team. Uh, and as such, many of, uh, you know, the responsibility of all Starfleet is to seek to our own mental and physical health. I can't help but notice that you have rece are receiving your own medication, Chief. Tell me, how long have you been receiving this? Insight versus two. Yeah. Oof. That is a minus four on the dice. Six on the dice. Gets up to... So minus six overall. I get it up to minus four. Uh, I'm going to re-roll with... Um, go with my gut. It's only logical. Because I, go you on. know, my gut tells me that Hubbard is the, uh, the key here. Um, that's flat on the dice, which means it's flat overall because I have a two in insight and a uh, so I will spend a fate point on. Um, I mean, you, on a tie, you will get an answer, but at a minor narrative cost. If yeah, go for it. Yeah, let's go for it. Okay. I'm assuming that my uh, major narrative cost has been the um, the voice being creepy with me. Though. <laughs> Far be it for me to speculate on on whether I've taken anything I don't need else. To, I don't. I don't need to do that. Sorry, because I've got um, cheapest prescribed relaxants. It's a free invoke. You have. You so have. This seems like the best time to use it. It does. It does. Um, so yeah, no, you, yeah, he he says, you know, you're right. Uh, you know, deep space operations are wearing. Um, the whole deck is is you know only only provides some variety and yeah i found it increasingly stressful and um and so you know the doctor prescribes me some stuff but but i don't think it 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 renders me inefficient or she wouldn't leave me in post can you remember why you began the medication just the job was getting on top of me 
How so? Well, it's like you said, you know, deep space operations, it's not very glamorous. We don't get to explore stuff. We don't get to, you know, we don't fight no Klingons um, uh, or Romulans or, or, or anybody, you know, uh, the Cardassian border wars come and go and we just plod along doing our job. But it's not easy out here. Would you be willing to suspend your, you, how frequent, you know, I'd like to ask him how, you know, is, is it a thing that if he stopped taking it, it would uh, wear off or if I could uh, take him down to med bay and, uh, you know, oh, it's and detox him basically using a little hypo spray. Um, I think that will require a bit of convincing. Let me cut back yeah, to yeah. 733T, who is Perhaps now... as I say, would you be interested, would you indulge me, uh, Chief? with an experiment, and then that look on his face has been cut away. <laughs> um, 733T, so a phaser-drawn um, astrometrics team. No me and Vassal. No. Very well. Um, I'll ask the, uh, where's the nearest Pulsar star? Uh, how near would you like it to be? Irrelevant as long as one is there's one, somewhere. yeah. Astrometrics, yeah, yes, yes, sir. Um, you know, here, um, fine. Um, computer no longer accepts time stamps, uh, from Starfleet, base all time on pulsar emissions. Um, command override required, override it overrides. Uh, that you know, screens go and reset. Um, and Astronauts say, say, so we, we we have experiments in progress, we have observations in progress. Just locking onto a radio signal from a pulsar star should not, uh, but but we've been, you know, that there's kind of disbelief that you've done this. Astrophysics, you would well know that the emission from a pulsar star is one of the best measures of time. Yeah, but 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 the time signal is is standard. We we run our experiments on the basis of that. The time signal at Starfleet is picked up from a pulsar star. So <sighs> yours based on a nearby pulsar star will be as good. They're 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 concerned about the nature of their experimental results it's fair to say their observations um and then 73t uh, i'm going to go to engineering okay actually no uh, i'm going to go a hubbard but i will meet vassal first okay so um uh vassal i think he is going to need to be convinced it sounds like insight and i think difficulty is is free because he's um, nervous about, mm -hmm. he's he's reliant on these things. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. um I uh, will. I think actually, I will uh, use command here instead of insight. Okay. Just going for it because uh, I think that what I'm uh, calling upon is uh, that. This doesn't make sense to him, and he doesn't see the confusion. But uh, I'm the ranking officer uh, here, and you know, uh, it's an order, chief. Okay, okay. Oof. It's two under four, which is terrible. Under six, even which is terrible. Um, I will uh, invoke my uh, high concept of Vulcan Helm officer. Um, Fine. To you know, uh, we do that. You, are, you do have rank here, yeah. Spend yeah. a fate point. Um, that's tied on the dice. Okay. You, you said right. So difficulty of three. Difficulty of three. So I'm at minus one. Um, you know what I'm going to invoke is uh, resistance. Maybe illogical, but never futile, because none of this is logical. None of this is whatever, right? And uh, you got to push through. Spend Logic fails point. all of this. So yeah, and, no, I'm out of fate points. 
Um, and do you want to meet here? He's going to take uh, Hubad down to sick bay. I'm guessing seven three three T. Do you want to do you want to meet them there or en route? Yeah, I'll, I'll meet him in, in sick bay. Fine. Yeah. So so uh, there we are in sick bay. Uh, you know, he gives permission to, for uh, Sanar to to you know run a detox. Um, that you know it won't be instant. So uh, he'll oh, I mean, be on a bio uh... bed. We, it's not going to be just a little. Oh, if only it was. Yeah, if only um, it was some sort of future utopia where such exactly things... where such things were possible. Um, because that gives you two a chance to have a conversation and see where you want to go next. Uh, mm -hmm. and then we'll cut back to whatever. Can I ask get. that we have a a, 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 a tellerite naked from the waist up, as though he's in an old fashioned doctor's chamber? <laughs> Yeah. So you know, it just away from this, uh, where you can you can speak discreetly if you want to. What's the conversation? Oh, you wanted to I talk to Vassal, didn't you? Yeah, I press the. Uh, you know how like nowadays you've just got like a little um, shower curtain thing. Yeah. I press the Star Trek equivalent of that, which is some kind of like force field, right? Like yeah, like, yeah. Off. No, because uh, there's a the, the, there's a surgery bay which is which has a security field, so that would be a yeah. job. Yeah. Uh, Something is very wrong on the station, 733T. I keep hearing rather disturbing messages from the computer. I've seen temporal anomalies. Anomalies? Anomalies. <laughs> I've seen you and I in a location before I got there. As if we were minutes ahead. Fascinating. And we have not my experiments have proved that time is not being correctly measured here. And yet we have not yet been to this location together. No. Something is clearly wrong. Was there anything else odd about our appearance or behaviour? They were not completely either Vulcan or Borg. Well, you are not completely Borg, my friend. But I take your point. They were not as we are now you do look I don't believe I've ever seen you look disturbed before this is not a physical threat that can easily be overcome agreed if only Koenig was with us mm. so I suggest we dump the computer core the station will not be able to Operate with it. Computer Standard drive. life support should continue on its own backup systems. Perhaps we should then go to the Montgomery them. and we come back with a new computer call. Perhaps we should uh, signal the Montgomery. It is still the, based upon our rendezvous, I believe it's still the closest uh, ship in distance. Uh, the captain. Well, computer patches through to Captain and Montgomery. When you say computer, do you mean your shuttlecraft, presumably, or? Uh, no, we'll we'll use the computer here. Um, um, I, when he says that, I, I when he says computer, I will uh, say computer cancel call. Do you believe it is wise to use the, the station's computer, given that we suspect it? Just to ask. Cause. No, we're only going to ask the Montgomery to come here, and it's already listening to us now. Well, indeed. So, <laughs> it's irrelevant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Computer, patch us through to the USS Montgomery. Um, uh, Montgomery is um, is that UX? USS yes. Montgomery. Yeah, and Montgomery answers, thinking you're on the shuttle. Montgomery, uh, we are at. Starbase. Um, Outpost Psy Alpha 3. Outpost Psy Alpha 3. Please divert to this location. We need um, technical assistance with a problem. Um, uh, okay, um, Lieutenant. Um, we, uh, I've, I've, I'll just contact the captain um, and uh, we'll get back to you. Uh, Ensign. Uh, Vassal will cut in. Uh, please stress to the captain that this is more urgent than 73TT has perhaps 
uh, explained, there is more than a technical problem here. I believe the entire station crew of the station may be at risk. Uh, uh, understood. Uh, we'll we'll respond uh, as uh, once I I I pass that to the captain. It's a slightly scratchy signal. It must be said the interference from the nebula is 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 a thing, um, but yeah. Uh, now, the thing I was thinking is that we have no way of, because we use the ship's station computer to do it, we have no way of knowing um, if the signal actually went out to the Montgomery or if it just played it back, whereas if we'd use the shuttle, we would have a slightly higher burden of uh, evidence, you know? Um, oh, I'm more than happy to go down the shuttle and make the same call. Perhaps that would be wise. I Everything on, this, on board uh, Outpost Psi Alpha 3 appears to be in a state of quantum un uncertainty, uh, reforming and collapsing with every observation. There is no consistency even between the inconsistent uh, versions of events. However, whatever it is, Hubad is the only member of the crew that I've been identified as being present before any of this began to take place. He is the only one who appears to have any memory of the dead doctor. The dead doctor who has simultaneously died within an airlock accident and a radiation leak in her lab, which remains sealed. Was it the current doctor here also? No. He took over five, he took over, according to his, the version of events that was true there, some six years after the death of Dr. Betrayer. The date for the doctor's death has varied between one year ago, 11 years ago, and 59 years ago, I believe. 15 years ago. 15 years ago. Yeah, we didn't the, ask, the, actually, at the point that we had the 60 years one. Yeah, Yeah. the, the chief is, is up to 60 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, basically articulating that there's no yeah. consistent form of truth beyond the uh, those points, yeah. Um, you can get really lost in the details when you're dealing with an uh, alternate reality, can't you? Uh, so, um, which is why scripts never do it. Uh, <laughs> they always just breeze over those bits. Um, so I believe it would be very wise of us to verify everything as independently as possible. And so far, the X and ourselves are the only external sources of observation here. Uh, everybody involved in the station appears to be involved to in it appears to be affected. I'm hoping that uh, Chief Hubad's medication plays some role in this in his case. Uh, and I await the doctor's instructions. Uh, I await the doctor to administer the uh, detoxification hypo. But I believe that once we've verified that the signal has gone out, we should investigate the lab, verify whatever we can with Hugh Baden is, uh, hopefully it will bear fruit. And perhaps, I don't believe that we will be able to eject the computer core without the aid of the station staff. I mean, I'm not sure you'll be able to physically eject the computer core. I think you'll be able to, to you know, wipe it clean. Um, it's warp cores that usually get, um, can be usually Yeah, yeah, ejected. but uh, yeah. anything physically should be able to be lobbed out. Well, but yeah, unbolted. Yeah. We'll, we'll just take yeah. it apart and throw it out an airlock. Or at the end of the day, I will pull out a phaser and say, we could yeah. disintegrate it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, yeah. Okay. It's inanimate. But given how given how irate they got about you just changing the clock, um, I think that the we uh, can deal with the irateness of people after the action. Uh, yes, uh, peace through superior firepower, I believe is the phrase. Uh, Seven two three two. Um, is 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 that a suggested compel, Vassal? Mm, I mean. Yeah, it would be it's a suggested compel, I suppose, isn't it? I don't really want it to be because I don't want to fucking <laughs> start firing the phaser around. Um well let's let's just leave that on that shelf next to those hard moves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um so um is somebody gonna go to the X to just um I'll go to the X. Fine. Uh Vassal, are you gonna stay and wait? For the detox, which should be ready, you know, you know, by the time that that seventh yeah. is, 
Yeah, Vassal is taking the opinion position that um, only um, only through observation can we trust anything that happens to the crew, to the, uh, you know, because in fact, as he, and you know what he'll say, right? And there is another element, computer. Please give me the uh, the vital statistics of Ensign Levy. Uh, what gender? What uh, gender is Ensign Levy? Computer at birth? And 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 Vassal's seventy uh, three three is is off to to the shuttle bay. Um, yeah, but I just want to get the computer to tell me what it thinks Ensign Levy is. Uh, she or, or he. Ensign Levy is uh, declares as male. A member of the team told me that it was uh, that she declared as female previously. Um, and interestingly, if you check your little kind of dog tag printouts, um, declares as male. Hmm. So is the computer. Can I do a discover something here? What like, would you like to discover? You know, well, we've done quite a lot of cross referencing in between the you have. testimony of the crew, the computer. The computer does give different answers depending upon when you ask it but then mm -hmm. on some things it seems to be internally consistent um such as ensign levy is there any sort of pattern that either player i'm not seeing that my character might be able to see okay okay let's have you roll now i think this is quite a difficult one um yeah i think difficulty here is probably this is simed to 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 theorize theoretical problem yeah yeah uh, against a difficulty of four Okay, and can I take it? This is this was essentially the, the our confab was this basically, you know. Yes. Uh, so if I can yes. have aid from a seven three three T, you can, you can. Yeah. Um, we're the two worst characters to have done this. <laughs> uh, oh, it's a one under five. So, yeah, possibly the worst dice roll game, and I have no fake points. So, oh. Oh my! So um, go with my gut. It's only logical. Um, I am going to compel. Go with my gut. It's only logical. Um, for you to have concluded that seven three three T may be right. That uh, this is in fact a deeply seated computer virus that needs to be flushed out of the system in much the same way that the chief needs to be de detoxed. Whether you think you need to destroy it or just, you know, reset to zero, I don't know. But mm. that's the compel I'm offering you. Mm. Perhaps some sort of leak with the... I'll, I'll take it because I want a fake point back because it's interesting. Of course you do. It, gives, it gives room for uh, me not to step on Paul's uh, suggestions. Uh, any it does. Further, uh, which is, um, you know... Uh, Perhaps you are right, uh, 733T. Perhaps the quantum uh, computing circuits of the of the ship's uh, core have been affected by the radiation leak and have uh, gained a, are in a state of continual quantum flux that is affecting reality itself. Uh, the only, the, perhaps the only solution is to, to remove the computer core. Uh, I will stay with uh, Chief Hubad uh, and we will then, we will gain his authorization to, uh, to proceed with our mission if we're going to gain his authorization then let's argue the point from an engineering point of course so therefore it'd be better if i stay here with you and we argue the point together oh that's what i mean yeah entirely yeah okay so the pair of you set off for sickbay uh by which time the detox is ready um, and uh, she sedated him during the detox just because it could have been a little painful. Um, and then when you come back, it's, it's to just get him awake. Um, and, and, and he comes awake and, and, and he looks at you and he looks at the doctor and screams, No! Chief, Chief, what's wrong? It's me. I did it. I did it. I did killed what? her. Uh, I look at uh, Suna. Uh, guilt? You didn't mention that it was guilt that drove you to... I just 
saw you know high levels of stress and 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 he launches himself off the bio bed um and seems to be wanting to leave sick bay what do you do i think Vassal, you were probably too close at that point um, yeah i think i'm seven, back. 733t what do you do let's phaser him phaser set the stun yeah. you, you should you, you should really uh get alan to give you uh invoke those as compels you know <laughs> like uh like phaser and p3 superior firepower yeah. uh yeah absolutely yeah. no he goes down like a yeah i'm going to give you that compel have a fake point um it's it's you are absolutely playing to those aspects and he goes down like a sack of potatoes he will no longer flee the area doctor he will um, no longer answer questions either 733t true his confession was good enough he killed her boredom curiosity fear and frustration it's been an interesting day um the doctor will suggest given his reaction that she secures him in sick bay agreed Indeed. and this is um, good enough reason for us to now take command of this station as the highest ranking officers here and um the loss of the chief I believe we shall now. Doctor Sanar can't can't argue with regs. Well, he, he, Doctor Sanar could deem that we're mentally incompetent. <laughs> well, I I think she had those thoughts about Vassal, but what she's just seen, uh, you know, you're saner than he is at the moment. And you know the the bio bed reading is showing that kind of outline of his brain with you know explosions of 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 red uh, happening all across it. Uh, uh, computer record um, change of command of station. So uh, both command myself. override accepted. Yeah, um, seven three three T Alpha and six nine two. Vassal Lieutenant X Y two nine six. Uh, command override accepted. Uh, now that's all we... rather derailed the idea of going to shuttle shuttle bay. I don't know if that's still on the cards. Uh, how many shuttles yeah. does have they got on the station? One. How many? What's its capacity? Um, it's a bigger one than you, so it's it's. I think it's probably a Type Six. Uh, one or two crew and six passengers for safe operations. A couple more if you wanted more. Yeah, we can't transport 34 people off the ship. Um, so um, anyway, uh, let's, um, you know, I got the compel for it, right? So uh, your instincts are right. We've gained control of the station in terms of like the authority to do so. We've locked down the chief. Um, I think... Uh, we're heading straight to dispose of the computer core now uh, to disable it. Um, yeah, I think, I think I think that's where we take our second break. Uh, yeah, it's just on the hour. Back in our seats at five past. So, um, is there any kind of now hear this, now hear this, uh, now that you've taken command, or or what? Uh, yeah, Vassal, I'm going I'm to go to Vassal first because technically Vassal is ranking. No, I mean, just into... yeah, yeah, but I'm good with uh, what you know, 733T was go a on, 733T. Suggest. Yeah, this uh, is all, this is your ball game. All stations listening, the chief has been relieved of duty due to medical uh problems. Myself, Lieutenant 733T of the USS Montgomery, and Lieutenant Vassal, also of USS Montgomery, have now taken control. Of the station as the highest ranking officers. Um, listen in for any further updates. Please continue all actions that you were performing before. Lieutenant, they will not be able to once we disable the core. I believe that we should uh, sound a red alert and have all crews uh, stay in position. Let me assess the core situation when I we haven't seen the core. Yeah. 
Yeah. Once at the core, I will issue those commands. How good is the medical facilities here compared to the Montgomery? Um, I would have said that these these were equivalent, but not as numerous. So you have a single sick bay, whereas the Montgomery has two and an emergency, for given the crew size. Can I suggest to Vassal that you take the doctor and the chief in the shuttlecraft to the Montgomery for treatment there? We have more medical staff that can provide round-the-clock care, unlike the doctor here. And will it, will, it will provide separation from the chief from this location. That may also be a contributing factor. I will take the doctor and chief aboard the shuttle, and I will attempt to establish communications with the Montgomery again. Yeah, just just by the by, you do notice as you leave sick bay or depart or separate on the corridor, uh, seven through three going one way, you going the other, that some of the uh, the Borg implants um, that we know that that seven three three G is still largely Borg. Um, with the exception of kind of face and maybe one hand or something. There's a lot of... Uh, um, some of those surface implants uh, begin to activate. The sooner we have left the station, the better, I believe. 7 3 uh, And I look, uh, I believe that may be having an effect on yourself as well. Indeed, that could be true. But saving the chief, currently, I believe, is more important than myself. Yeah, I don't. Um, for a period of time until you get the Montgomery here. Yeah, you know, I will. Um, I will wheel me and the doc. I'll convince the doctor to wheel him and the chief down into the uh, the shuttle thing and board the shuttle and attempt to uh, leave the station, establish communications with the Montgomery, uh, and request um, you know, to meet them en route, essentially. Um, fine. Um, and, and as you, you know, you take the turbo lift down to the shuttle bay um, and and uh, come out of the shuttle bay, um, some of the engineers who work in the shuttle bay, you can see are arming themselves from, uh, you know, this kind of secure weapons on the deck. Um, uh, they don't notice me and the doctor as we enter the deck? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Doc, um, they're a Borg aboard. Uh, no, there are no. My my colleague is a uh, rehabilitated Borg drone. Uh, who did was... you not? Did you not hear that that announcement? They've come to assimilate us. No. If the if the chief's not fit, Doc, get him to the shuttle. Get him off the get him off the the outpost. We'll try and hold him. I look uh, at them. There's more of them that would fit in the runabout, one assumes. Um, yeah. Uh, I will go for help. So you should stay here and secure the shuttle bay. Starfleet will need an entryway to take, retake the to retake the station. Okay, so we'll hold the shuttle bay. And the uh, doctor looks at you as if to say, what are they talking about? That's not the announcement you made. Welcome to my world, Doctor. Welcome aboard. Uh, What's and, going on here? That is what we will hopefully work out. Uh, perhaps once we have gained some distance from the station, it may become things may become more apparent. Um. Yeah. Fine. So you're aboard. Uh, you're going to check in with the Montgomery. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I will, of course, uh, try and reach seven three three T via the. Uh, who is within the station comms one one suspects rather than the um yeah the ship base comms right and do, am I able to get through and warn them of a uh... yeah I think so um yeah. so, so yeah what do you say I I say uh you know the message that I would be giving to them is um that whatever anomaly is affected you know what people are hearing and understanding of the situation has extended to our own uh, warning our own announcement uh, be prepared for the crew to be hostile uh. I advise caution. You know, that's what I want to say to them. What is it that 733T hears? 
Uh, no, I, I'm I'm very happy for your comms to be at this point okay. still secure because no, no, I think no, you're no. probably I think you're probably using your comm badges via the shuttle. Hey, acknowledged. Okay, I I think it would have been more revealing to know if it was the, the ship. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, right. You know okay. Saying, like, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Right. Okay. Um. So you're going to check the Montgomery seventy three T. You're on your way to the computer core. Yeah. Which is just below engineering, I think, probably. Somewhere near engineering. Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you do when three crewmen, you know, take positions at the end of the corridor with hand phasers aimed at you? Well, this just seems like Star Wars. We've got three idiots and armed Darth Vader. So this is down the corridor, you know. <laughs> okay so um you know this is this isn't security so i think um two uh sorry i i'm going to give them a combined uh kind of security of three and everyone every time you take one down you take one down um uh, so you're defending against that three to start with so it's um security plus whatever versus three I mean, that's pretty goddamn good. So five. So I'm five above. I'm now seven above. With seven phaser. above. What's your security? Three plus two for wow, anything five. using phaser, and then plus yeah. two off the dice. Oh, seven. I'd forgotten about your target practice. Right. Gee whiz. So plus how many? It totaled uh, seven above. Okay. Um. All three of them. Uh, stand or kill. It's done. We're okay. Not kill stage yet. Okay. Okay. They go down in a heap. Um, uh, Basal, you communicate to the Montgomery. Yeah. yeah I'm and, trying to and, communicate to the Montgomery. Uh, yes. And um, Phoenix uh, comes on. Um, oh, hi, uh, Basal. Uh, we wondered where you were. Uh, you're running a bit late, I think. Is the Montgomery not on its way, Lieutenant? We issued a distress signal from uh, station uh, from Psy Alpha 3 uh, several hours ago. Um, no, I have the con. The captain is aboard uh, the outpost. Just, just... Keenick, there is something very wrong at outpost Psy Alpha 3. I'm sending you my coordinates now. Some sort of anomaly is uh, unleashed upon the station. All of the crew here are in high danger. 733T is still on board. Um just just a just a moment, Vassal. Um I, I I'm just being told we have no records of a Psi Alpha 3. Neither did we until we visited the location until we checked again. I'm sending you oh, the oh. coordinates. Okay, send me the coordinates. And you do? Yeah. Uh and I look frustratingly and I think, you know, the Montgomery is not going to be here for several hours. Uh, I'm not going to be able to get to the Montgomery for several hours. Um, and I think back on the, uh, and I look at the shuttle and the doctor. Uh, and I say, doctor, now that we are off this, and we're off the station, I think at this point, like I lifted the shuttle, of, left it. That's what you want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And departed. Um, Doctor, how long have you been on the station? Um, and I think she tells you what she told you before, which was, okay. I think, six years. Yeah, yeah. Um, so she remains internally consistent with what she's told me, even though that doesn't remain consistent with what everybody else has said around. No, no. I mean, broadly speaking, I think individual people have been consistent about yes. themselves. About themselves, yeah. It's the shared realities that are the... Uh, yes. The, uh, yeah. Um, I am going to, um, turns out runabouts do have uh, transporters on board. Oh, uh, do they? Yeah, they, they have a small personnel transporter uh, aboard. There you go. Uh, there you go. I must add it to the uh, to the auxiliary craft, craft tab. Yeah. Um, too bad is, uh, please, uh, it was uh, you know, strapped into a seat. Uh, I will pull out the med kit and uh, hand it to the doctor and say, wake him up. Wake him up? Wake him up. 
okay. She, you know, wakes him up. Yeah. Chief. Chief, listen. You're the only one who can help us. What is happening on board uh, Outpost Alpha 3? What happened I, to the... Betray's experiment. It, it, it went terribly wrong. I, 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 I had to seal it off. I had to try and stop it. Where is the Pat back to 733T yeah. um, on your way to the computer core. Um, there it is, 733T. Um, you know, this, this, you come in at this deck, it goes up for two decks. This, you know, a pair of great cylindrical data stores. What do you do? Um, phaser on disintegrate and blast them. It's going to take you quite a long way, long time to work through that. It might be quicker just to purge it. Well, um, can they be ejected? No. Fine, let's start with a purge. If they come back with any life, um, then yeah, I'll 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 start destroying them. Fine. So um, I think it's just a question of how quickly you can do this, and that's an engineering task. So uh, engineering versus a difficulty of four. I'm going to have to use my last fate point because I am a Starfleet engineer. Oh, well, let's see two, how the I, dice I, go. Let's see how the dice oh, no, go. The, the, the dice did go and I didn't oh, get Oh, gosh, that's it. minus three. Uh, Sorry, I've, just I, I've actually got two fate points, so that's fine. Let's have a reroll. Okay. And that is plus one above. Fine. Um, do you want to boost that to speed up the purge? I've only got one fate point. What's the okay, time? Okay, okay. 20 past. No, we'll, we'll keep one fake point. <laughs> Such gamesmanship. Um, and, and you know, it, it's one of those panels where you can see, you know, uh, memory storage, you know, be, 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 be counting down. Um, but then through the open door, you can see um, a group of crew coming towards you armed. What do you do? Uh, well, I didn't use the phaser to destroy the computer core, so <laughs> let's use on some other people then. Okay. Uh, or so, actually, no, let's use engineering to seal the door. Okay, fine. Roll to it. Roll engineering. Then I think overcome is just three. Two, Job's yeah. done. Um, in fact, that's by that's success with style. So it's sealed, uh, and you have a boost to apply against them trying to break in. And you can hear, you know, kind of as they're trying to break in. Uh, back to Vassal. Where is the... Um, I pull out a, uh, a space suit from one of the lockers uh, and I begin putting it on and I, uh, I look to the doctor, I look to the chief and I say, chief, where is... Uh, and I pull... No, I look on the computer and I... Uh, start scanning while I'm pull, pulling on the suit with one arm and I start scanning for the um, the sealed lab location. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to make that difficult for you. You can identify it. If you're going to space jump towards it, hell. Um, I wasn't going to space because I assumed that it wouldn't have an external entry. What I was going to do is beam aboard in the space suit. Okay. So okay. Radiation, right? Okay. Uh, but if you're telling me that there is a... Uh, no, yeah. I'm, I'm. I mean, I, I, I'm very happy for you to to beam to that location in a spacesuit because yeah. you're worried about the radiation. I see. Yeah. No, I and jumped I'm to also, a conclusion. I'm also worried about returning the doctor and the uh, the chief to um the ship. So I'd like to compel the Starfleet is more than ships. Say again. Starfleet is more than ships. I want to keep these two people alive and not Fine. have the, my own getaway vehicle here because I'm now reliant upon the station that I know to be completely screwed. You know. Um, so, yeah, uh, and I tell the doctor, um, you know, um, whatever happens, uh, if we don't come back, get out of here. Something is very wrong. Don't trust your memories. Don't trust the ship's station. Just get out of here. Why? Uh, want to beam aboard, you know? Why? Yeah, energized, that's the word, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it is. Um, and then, you know, be 
beep, beep. Uh, and you can you can see, you know, there's a portion of the door beginning to glow a little bit, 733T. Um, and, and you know, beep, 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 beep. Do you do anything? Or is this uh, just one of those door, tense scenes? Will the door be breached before? Um, I think there is a risk of that, yes. Fine. Um, take a fire in position and open the door. Oh, catching them therefore by surprise, and I will use that surprise. boost on the thing if I need to. Yes, fine. So um, difficult. It was going to. I mean, there's 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 half a dozen of them out there, but most of them are engaged in the door. So I think difficulty here is only two. Oh, didn't want to roll that bad though. Could that, so minus three. So I'm at zero plus two. Difficulty two. I'll use that boost to take it to plus two. Fine. Uh, you take two of them out, um, and they fall back. But the door is now open. Yeah. Yep. Um, beep, 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 beep. Um, Vassal, you appear in the sealed lab. Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, we'll see you check your radiation gu guide, and it is indeed slightly high. And that's when, behind you, 733T, you hear, um, you hear, hang on, science officer's log, star date, 37775.6, Dr. Erin Betrayer reporting. Um, Vassal, there is something in the middle of this room. It it looks for all the world like a glowing tear. Yeah, um, I think teleport beam in right and like uh, blinding light, like uh, and then uh, you know twiddles with the buttons and it little visors down, uh, making it more visible. Uh, fascinating. Um, and I begin to walk towards the uh, the tear. Okay. To anyone that finds this message, I am Erin Betrayer, except that's not my name. One day I woke up and my old name was gone. Because of what I did, I fear who I was will be gone forever. Approximately two weeks ago, I detected a spatial anomaly in the nebula that I thought might shed some light on local subspace properties. In studying it, I bombarded the anomaly with exotic particles. I thought it closed. How wrong I was. I started to notice, notice strange happenings on the station. Rumours, tall tays and I, idle talk among the station's crew were slowly imposing themselves on factual reality. My name became Dr. Betrayer simply because enough people believed that to be the case. I tried to tell them and get them to believe something was wrong, but I couldn't get through to them. It didn't help my very thoughts, personality, appearance changed to fit other people's perceptions of me based on hearsay. I had no choice but to lock myself in my lab in the hopes that I would be able to find a solution. What do you do, Vassal? Um, hmm. I don't... Oh, how do we do that? So, like, am I hearing this as well, right? As I... Uh... I'm very happy for you to hear this. You know, I mean, we yeah. we the audience know this, so you have context yeah. for your actions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think perhaps it's being played synchro in synchronization, you know, between the two computers, right? As they as I walk through the lab, um, I uh, I uh, I whisper into my breath, uh, "Keenig, where are you?" Uh, as I stare at the uh, the collapsing waveform, uh, and I look down at my phaser. Uh, I think, what would 733T do uh, here? Um, well, at that point, let's cut back to 733T. What are you doing, 733T? How many people are left now? Uh, there's there's four of them retreated up the corridor into cover. Looks like they might try to rush you. Uh, well, uh, they, Good can run, but they, they can run, but they can't hide. So let's not even allow them to retreat. Let's storm down the corridor and gun them down like the dogs they are. Okay. So um I think there I think three of them are so difficulty is three. Go for it. Oh no. 
That's terrible. Um, I might have to re-roll on that. Uh, yeah, is that the last fate point? Yeah, I'm going to have to use it. <laughs> you know, still thirty minutes to go. There we go. Uh, piece through superior firepower. Let's re-roll that bad boy. Um, oh, that's a lot better. Uh, okay, three, four, five minus one. So plus four versus your three. You take one of them down. Two of them will fire back at you in a moment. Um, the personal log entry continues. However, this turned out to be the wrong course of action. People began believing I was dead after not seeing me for days. And because they believed it, I did die. To this very moment, I am locked in a Schrodinger-like state between life and death. It is a hell I wish on no one. Do not try and save the people here. Their Starfleet training lets them ignore the phenomena around them. And as a result, things just get worse and worse as time goes on. Disturbing their self-imposed reality could very well rip local space-time apart. So please, do not stay here. Destroy this station. Make sure no one ever comes here again. Get out before it's too late. What do you do, Vassal? Uh, um, I... Uh... I begin to meditate. Uh, I begin to focus upon. Uh, I uh, I think through, uh, you know, seven three three T Keenick, etc. And then there is a flash of my mother's face, uh, coldly talking about uh, logic, and uh, you know that there is logic is the only truth to reality. So uh, you know the words of all of this, and hearing the doctor's uh, plea. Um, I steady myself uh, and I begin to uh, invoke one of the mantras of uh, the Vulcan schools of logic and I begin to focus on the details that I know to be true here. Uh, that the doctor did not die. The doctor was not named betrayer. This is an anomaly. People's beliefs and emotions are shaping reality that itself. However, there is a reality, there is logic. There is a return to it, and I am going to uh, reach well, out. Well, before you tell me that, let me cut back to 733T as you are reciting your logic mantras from your childhood. First time in a while. Um, 733T, uh, two of them fire at you. Uh, defense against two. Massive. <laughs> uh, three, four, five, plus another four, plus nine. How do you how, how do you finish this 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 off? What what action hero? Uh, uh, broad broad phase of beam, um, yeah, the widest possible setting, uh, and then just arc it across these these two guys that had stepped out to uh, try and fire on me. Clearly, they weren't quick enough to get the drop on me. Uh, so down like the spuds they are. Vassal, cut back to you. Yeah, uh, I will um, attempt, you know, I will uh, chant Surak's teachings uh, and I will attempt to um, collapse this quantum field of uh, possibilities and um, everything into the cold truth of uh, what I know to be true uh, and attempt to do a good old fashioned, um, the Vulcan does some weird mind stuff to uh, resolve <laughs> the anomaly. Um, yeah, I think I... that's command. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you're trying to collapse a spatial anomaly with the con with with the force of will. Yeah, I am a Vulcan. Yeah. Yeah. You are uh, a Vulcan, uh, albeit you are the Tosh Katur. Um, but you know, scratch of a Tosh Katur and you find a logical Vulcan. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. I think difficulty here is going to be five. Okay. And I think I'm being terribly generous, but there you go. Hey, I mean, it's Star Trek. You can pull up it is. Difficulty <laughs> um, so, varies with narrative demand. Yeah. Okay. So that is plus four on a dice, which only puts me at a minus one. Minus one. Uh, over, well, plus four, including my uh, skill. So minus one. Uh, and I will, in fact, invoke. Um, you know what? Because I think that some of this is, in fact, not just the uh, 
the logic, I think that even the logic begins to, uh, you know, tumble over itself as, um, you know, there's that sort of effect of like different flashes and numbers and like the things and the, the readouts, the times and everything, you know, like what logic can there be in a world where even the computers read different times, right? But I have And behind you, there is you in a space suit going, ah. Yeah, yeah, lots of uh, two thousand and one end of end of sort of like uh, moments, right? And I will, um, I will invoke the open philosophy as I am able to uh, think in both terms. You know what I know to be true, what I feel okay. to be true, all of those things. So that goes from minus one to plus one. Yeah, um, and that's a succeed. I achieve my goal there, I guess, which is to. Um, to bring some sanity to this, to bring some consistency, I think, to uh, to temporarily rein in the effect. Um, I think, though, I would push it up with another invoke uh, to get a boost. You know what I want? Well, no, would it be basically what I want to do is, as doing this, to bring, to collapse the quantum, the, the Schrodinger's death, you know, and bring back the Doctor, who's uh, whoever Okay, okay. So I think, um, I mean, I was rather hoping you would invoke Starfleet is more than ships. That's what I'll do. I'll invoke that one, yeah. Because yeah. I think it is being told to destroy this. That seems just yeah, to break the an, crew off. That was not, not an option, yeah, at all. Yeah. Albeit that 733T is working her way through a, a number of them. Um, yeah. I've um, got 27 to go now. <laughs> And in fact, no, take off two for the chief and the doctor. I'm down to only 25. Yeah, you can pick those up later, right? Like <laughs> um, and um this this kind of tear begins to kind of just close. Um, and then you hear a voice, and the voice says something like in your world. There is only one reality. Every living being contains its own reality, but beyond them, they share one. Oh, primitive. And it closes. And stumbling towards you is a woman in um, a Starfleet uniform that is, you know, more than a decade old. Yeah. Okay, so not in a Kirk style. Uh... No, not quite that far back. Um, uh, uh, what? What? Uh, uh, hmm. um, and I'm inclined at that point to cut. Yeah, because yeah. I and and and. <laughs> Could it perhaps be with, uh, you know, I could, I could just say, uh, you know, as she stumbles towards and grabs like, what, you know, and then just be a computer, identify this woman and then it lists her actual name and we know then that it's been resolved, yeah. you know, yeah. and yeah. go down her face, right, as uh, she's finally not Dr. Betrayer anymore and she can't remember who she is. And that's the point at which the computer switches off 733T. Um and there, there is a sense on that corridor, 733T, of, of kind of, of, of a, just a phase shift um, or maybe a phase compression of a number of different parallels just coming together into one. Um, and cut to aboard the Montgomery. Um, what's, the, what's the epilogue scene between the two of you on the Montgomery? I think it's um well 733t will present Vassal with the um primitive time piece and say this is very useful but also a memento for you to always remember what happened there Vassal so your reality is not distorted Thank you, 733T. I... You never miss your original name.
my original name. Stuffy. I forgot that long ago because it was of no consequence. It was wiped from my memory banks. The doctor was lost. Her whole identity changed into what other people perceived as them. I have self-perception. It troubles I know me. who I am. You know who you are now. It troubles me, my friend, that you do not know, remember who you were. We live in the now, never in the past. And I take the tower glass, I tip it upside down. <laughs> and uh, I think mean, that's the last shot of the uh, the episode, right? Uh, as those hours, as the hours, you know, the sand's flicking away through one way, and I turn it upside down to show that it can be done. It's all a matter of perspective, you know. Great, great. Um, uh, a quick stars and wishes. Any stars? Uh, any wishes? You want to go first, Paul? Yeah. Um, good teamwork. Um, I think there's only two of you playing. It it can't be confronty people playing. You you got to work together. Uh, and you know we both achieved that. Will from our own. That doesn't mean you have to follow exactly what the other person's doing. Uh, so you you know really good play from you there. Um, there's clearly some people I, I wouldn't have wanted to do that episode with. Um, and um, yeah, you, you, you know, um, Alan, um, good, um, good scenario. Quite different from. Uh, what we've sort of played before. Um, not too sure fake mechanics works. So it, yeah. Um, but, um, it, you know, it's good to use mechanics uh, in, in various ways. So it's good to see. Um, and, and yeah, you, you, know, you know, I can play around with the mechanics, you know, to make it suit any situation. Uh, so so that, that's fine. Uh, yeah. And yeah, only two people here. Really easy to do with stars and wishes. You don't have to go on forever. Um, <laughs> Any wishes for next time? Anything that, you know... Uh, I, I wouldn't want to impose on what we said last week when I wasn't going to be here anyway. And uh, I don't want really what's said here to interfere with anything Lowell wanted. So, you know... Fair enough. Will, any stars, any wishes? Um, I mean... Again, watching 733 TT, uh, really go for that P3 superior firepower um, aspect. Uh, yeah, I, I admit that, like, that whole, uh, I'm glad that you compelled me on the uh, go with the gut one, because I was like, it's just so not how I would imagine uh, Vassal wanting to do anything is blow up the uh, ship if it comes to, which is only a suggestion that you made, right? But, like, um, you know, they won't be able to stop us, because if they try, I'll just phase them anyways. Um, was like a ooh, bit for the character but i think the compels that's where fate works really well is when such things are offered as compels because it gives you the narrative because every character in any fiction right acts differently to based upon the circumstances right they have a misunderstanding or a different whatever right mm -hmm. um and obviously in role-playing games we often have like too much understanding sometimes of things um and i also thought that it was a really interesting scenario alan in terms of um that unreliable unreliable narration and everything like that and um unreliable facts and everything and i know uh i'm curious if perhaps that could be deepened in fate in particular by having environmental aspects and stuff that could be invoked or whatever right yeah um, I, I i thought about making it more mechanical yeah um, but I'll be honest with you, I you know that that, that was based on a, on a that framework came from uh, a, a scenario for um, Modiphius's Star Trek Adventures called Psy Shift mm. by uh, I, or the only detail of the author I have is E L H. So if if anybody's interested in this, search Psy Shift E by E L H. You may find it, um, which uh, I don't think is entirely internally consistent. And I thought about mechanizing it. But I thought it was probably a sledgehammer to crack a nut. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I think the only issue with the whole thing is that it's uh, we never really got an opportunity to see that it was consensus that was forming the shifts in reality. You know that like there was a weight of uh, and it was. Um, I was trying to find a way to get you to the mess hall. 
Yeah, it's a very, it's a very, uh, I mean, honestly, the mess hall could have been where we found the chief. Yeah, maybe. Saying, maybe. where do we do it? And, uh, you know, like, because in a, in any scenario where you have a, as a player, unreliable information, right, you're sort of at the whim of the, um, where's yeah, the GM? Fair point. Right? You, you uh, did line it up, actually, Alan, with intoxication. Well, you should have sort of compelled yourself to put him where you wanted him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, in um, the bar, in the bar. Yeah, we, yeah you did. You did line it up. I, you, I mean, you could. You could have said when he found out he was. You could have said anything, but you said he seems intoxicated, and we did all. Yeah, the thing. I did because Will yeah. did the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but also, like you know, uh, I enjoyed um, doing the whole Spock thing, and uh, you know, having the. Um, Particularly with the princess and de, de Gen's uh, contempt for the open philosophy of it all, um, it occurs to me um, that actually, probably what I, you know, looking at it, like the difficulty and then whatever, um, that if I think about it, I had two fate points, right? Uh, you should have made it um, a tougher one, even though I know you were leaning towards it, helping me succeed and like you know being a fan of the player and everything, being a fan of Will, the character. He had three fate points. He could have just spent them against you instantly. No, yeah, but I mean, I, I could have... What, what's the point? <laughs> no, but um, you can. Uh, success at uh, a major narrative cost or stress, right? And I can't think of a more appropriate time to take a major complication I, I thought about reality it. with your own uh, things. And I think that maybe, like, because fake gives you so many tools to bump up, and I'm often curious about those complications, those stress things. Like, I could have had a complication of, like... Um, you know, reality shifted or something. Well, or, uh, yeah, whatever. I mean, what what I would what I might suggest to you is that you may want to th rethink an aspect after that one. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, not not that's an interesting choice. Yeah, now I'll think about um, that because because I think that that was something of a um, a uh, an eye opening moment mm. for the character. So I I you know uh, end of every session you can always every end of every mission you can always. Uh, you know, shuffle a shuffle a, an aspect, and and I think <laughs> that that might be appropriate in this context as a as a as a consequence, frankly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I, Will, if he'd have spent you down by three fate points, you would have still only suffered a mild consequence, which yeah. goes at the end of mild is the end of the yeah end of the session. Yeah. End of the session. Yeah. So but, um, yeah. I'm always. Uh, you're happy. always wanting to, to to milk the consequences, and I never get you there. <laughs> um, it's got a really interesting system for having consequences. It isn't just you die, right? Like it yeah, is like yeah. you get what I'm, I'm, right? I'll, I'll be honest. With you, I was particularly conscious that there were there was that you there were only two of you when you were separated, yeah, so yeah. there wasn't much in the way of a fallback for resolution at that point. Um, yeah. So so yeah, I, I may I may have left that door ajar for you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it didn't occur to me. I was focused on binary pass fail rather than um you know yeah. yeah yeah but anyway that's just a general thought of uh every time we play fate i always like i think i'm getting the hang of it and then i forget hit me hit me hit me yeah yeah i forget um I, well, so in just as a wider question are we what are we uh in terms of advancing now um, I remember, what I, I yeah what what i we would have had a breakthrough after this session mm -hmm. but i think that given only two of you were here no, yeah, I, 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 I bottled it down as a consequence. I think that after the next mission, you'll get a breakthrough, which okay. will give you a bit of a, a, a concrete advance. Cool. Should we stop recording? Oh, yes. Let's do that.